Welcome back to another video. Now, Turbo Intruder allows us to fuzz things very, very quickly. And if you are on the community edition of Burp Suite, is a great alternative to the throttled intruder tool. Now, it was built by James Kettle and it's highly customizable and definitely worth checking out. So today we're going to walk through some use cases of Turbo Intruder so that we can get started building scripts and using this tool in our day-to-day -day work or as part of CTFs or bug bounty or pen tests or whatever it is that you'd like to do. If you enjoy the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. As cyber threats grow, so does the need for skilled professionals. TCM security certifications are here to elevate your skills to meet these challenges. Our courses are tailored to give you an edge with practical scenario-based exams. Step into the world of advanced cybersecurity at certifications.tcm-sec.com and to make your mark. All right, so first up, we're just gonna spin up Web Suite's Community Edition. And you can see this edition is a little bit old. I'm running the 2023 version, so probably time to update at some points, but it's okay for this video. Then let's just open up the built-in browser and I'm gonna come over to our Turbo Intruder Lab and kind of just walk you through what the lab is and how we're going to solve it. So first up, obviously, if you don't have credentials, so let's just try with Alex, Alex, we get login failed. But if you do have credentials, we can go with Jeremy and Jeremy's password. You get here to this MFA verification page. And as you can see, there's a timer. And so the MFA code expires in 50 seconds. We get 60 seconds in total. And then we need to figure out the four digit string MFA code. Now within the app, there's also kind of a backup just to prove that it works. So here we can go to slash MFA code and the code is currently 1757. And then we submit and then we get login successful challenge complete. Now the point of this lab is that if we don't have the user account to begin with, then we are going to be brute forcing or fuzzing maybe hundreds, maybe thousands of user accounts. And as soon as we hit an account, then we only have 60 seconds to then get in. So what we actually need is to fuzz the account and then very quickly um, brute force the MFA token straight after that. And you could just say, hey, actually what I want to do is just fuzz the account and then return the credentials and then come back and I will log in manually and then I'll kick off a MFA brute force. But what would actually happen is because as soon as we log in, the user of the account is going to get a notification. So they already know that somebody is trying to go into their accounts. So the account might get locked, it might get reported. And so if you're on an engagement where you actually need to attack users, but you need to be quick about it, then this is going to be doable with Turbo Intruder. So let's do this step by step. So first up, let's set up a script that can brute force the accounts. And once we've got that down, we can then extend our script in part two to then go ahead and automatically brute force the MFA token. So all I'm gonna do is come to Burp Suites and come over to extensions. And then we need to come to B App Store and we can either search for Turbo Intruder or we can scroll down and find it in the list. I probably should have searched for it. And here it is. So here we have Turbo Intruder. And on the right hand side, we can just come down and click install. As you can see, James Castle. Portswigger and we'll give it a minute to install and looks like we're all good. So now what we can do is we can come to proxy HTTP history and we can find our login request. So we want to find the post request to slash login, which is here. We can take a little bit of a closer look at this. So as you can see, it's just a post request to slash login. And here we're just passing in the username and the password. So let's right click extensions, Turbo Intruder, send to Turbo Intruder. And as you can see, so here is the script of the last code used. So obviously when I was prepping for this video, I wrote a working script, but usually what you do is you'd have this basic example, which lets you kind of start brute forcing based off what you want to do in one of these examples. So the ones that I found useful was the uh, race multi endpoint was quite useful and default.py and basic.py. And I think I skimmed through a few others as well when I was building my scripts just to have reference examples that I could use. So to save a little 
little bit of time instead of you watching me typing and typoing and going through everything and breaking everything along the way, we're just going to copy and paste in the script that I've written and we'll go through it line by line. So this is the default function that I got from the basic.py. So it just queues requests and takes in targets and word lists. And here, this is what I actually added. So this is what I changed. So I created a word list called usenames.txt and it's obviously at this path. And then I also created a word list called tmppass.txt just to make things a little bit quicker. I think there's only a thousand passwords in there rather than a huge word list like Rocky or something else. And so we obviously open here and go for username in this list and for each username we loop through and we test each password. And so once we've got the username and the password we send a we call engine.q and we send in the target.request and then we pass in the username and the password. And here what's happening is we have a handle response function. So when a response comes in, it takes the request. And then if the request.status is 302, then we add this to the table. So this is quite useful and we can obviously see which request was successful. This does require us to know that the a successful response is a 302. And obviously if we didn't know that, then we might just fuzz the endpoint and then look for outliers or requests with different content lengths, for example. But let's give this a try. The only other thing that you need to do is here in the request, we need to set up this so that when the username and passwords are passed in, they're replaced in the appropriate place as part of the request. Now the plugin can be a little bit quirky. So as you can see here, I've got no start button and that's because what's actually happened is the window is a little bit too big for my VM. So if you fit it to your VM, there's the attack button down the bottom. This happened to me a couple of times. I was like, oh yeah, where's the attack button gone? And it's here down the bottom. So just make sure you got your window sizing correct. And then if we hit attack, you can see here, there's some information about what happened and we can see the payload. So Jeremy and password one, two, three, and the status 302. And we can have a look at the request and the response and we get found redirecting to MFA. So we can verify this as always, we should verify our findings. So if I come back to the lab and Jeremy paste in the password, we get to our MFA step. All right, so next up, we want to be able to brute force the account, but do it in a way so that it's kicked off automatically and gives us access. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Okay, so first up, what we actually need to do is create a word list of potential pins. So we might have to do a little bit of research on our target to see what a valid pin looks like or what a valid MFA token looks like. But what I did was I wrote a little Python script here. So we're just generating four digit codes and this just writes these two files. So you can see that we go to home Alex word lists MFA codes.txt. And if I just tail this, for example, you can see we go all the way up to 9999. Now I could generate these codes as part of the term intruder scripts, but I ran into a few errors and issues while I was doing that. Even though it sounds like a simple task, I couldn't get it to work. So this is why what I've done is reverted back to something that I know that works because here I know that I can load in files and I can iterate over them successfully without any issues. So the approach that works is the best approach as usual. And what I'm going to do again is I'm going to copy and paste in the scripts that I created. And this is a little bit of a long one, as you can see. So once again, let's run through this. And if you want the scripts, I will post them on my GitHub or I'll post them as a gist and the links will be down in the description below. So here, once again, boilerplate code. And it's a little bit different because at this point I'd gone through more of the examples and I'd copied and pasted what I wanted from there. And this seemed to work out for me. And I did change the concurrent connections and the requests per connection to be able to make sure that I can brute force the right number of tokens or at least a decent number of tokens given the 60 second time limit. Of course, if I had more time, then I might have reduced the number of requests per connection and then been a little bit more chill, but obviously needed to get it to work within the time constraint. This is unchanged. So of course we're detecting the username and the password. 
And then here I updated the handle response. So if we have login successful in request.response, then we've logged in to the account. And obviously we can add that request to the table. But of course, once we use the MFA token, then it would be invalid. But what we can actually do is look at this request and then just take the cookie from that. So obviously when we send the MFA token, a new cookie is set, and then we can use that to steal the session and just continue as the user that's logged in. And here, if we have the 302, so this is just detecting the initial login. And what I've done here is I've also added some print statements. So these come out to the console. And here, all we need to do is if we come back to Web Suite and go to extensions and go to installed and Turbo Intruder, we can see the output here and we can also see errors here. So here in the output, any messages that you send to print are going to be output here, which is really useful because when I was troubleshooting, running into issues or something wasn't working or I didn't get the results I wanted, obviously I could print things, I could throw variables out, read them, see what's going on. And for example, I didn't, I wasn't sure that I was reading the cookie properly from the login request. And so obviously we can just print it and check that it's found. So that's a really useful way to troubleshoot your scripts. And then, so here we're going to session cookie equals the extract session cookie. And I have a little function to do that. So here is the extract session cookie function. And we just grab all of the headers. And then if there is a cookie, then return cookies.split and the first entry, otherwise return none. And then if we have a session cookie, then we start brute force MFA with that session cookie. And that's the next function on line 29. So once again, uh, we're just using boilerplate code. So the request engine and we send requests to here to get queued and, and carry out the actual attack. And the only thing I had to change here was I needed to set the targets, but otherwise everything else was all good. And then I created an MFA template, and this is literally just a post request to the MFA endpoints. And so as you can see, the only things that get changed are the cookie and the content length. Everything else is static. Oh, and of course the data payload down here. So the MFA equals one, two, three, four, for example, for, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But everything else stays the same. All of the other headers stay the same. We could probably strip this back and, and you know, for example, take out the user agent, maybe take out the accept encoding and the other headers. But once again, simple is good. And if it works, we don't need to give ourselves more of a headache troubleshooting which headers are required and which headers are going to change the behavior of our target application. We just want something that works. So once again, with open home Alex word lists MFA codes as file and for code in file, we do strip. So this is going to get rid of any trailing slashes or anything like that that might cause issues. And then we have the code string code equals and this puts in the string here. And then we change the content length to the length of code string. And this is probably static since it's always a four digit string on the end of code. So again, we could have hard coded this, but in the situation where the string length changes, this is probably quite useful. And then we have MFA request equals MFA dot template, MFA underscore template dot format. And then we pass in the session cookie, the content length and the code string. So again, we're updating the cookie and the content length and the MFA code as the body here. And then we just send this to engine2.q and then we're all good because the rest of it is getting handled by the handle response function, which again is just boilerplate code, comes with all of the examples and we can just build on top of that. And these first three lines are the ones that detect the MFA code found. Oh, okay, so that's the script. Let's give it a try and see whether it works. So I'm just going to come back to here and we're going to keep this request the same because obviously in this scenario, we actually need to brute force the account first and then do the MFA code. And of course, we wouldn't have a valid MFA code if we didn't initially log in. So let's hit attack. And here you can see it found the initial one, the initial login again very quickly. And you can see some information about like the number of requests sent, et cetera, et cetera, down here and the duration as well. So we're covering about 9,000 requests in about 15 15 seconds and here we have 
login successful challenge complete. So all in all, that was about two hours of work or maybe three hours of work, because to be honest, I did a lot of troubleshooting on Turbo Intruder and I ran into a bunch of different errors and a bunch of different things. And to be honest, in the end, what I needed to do was simplify my code. So for example, just using a word list and iterating over it for the MFA codes rather than trying to generate codes on the fly and also using the examples that were given. So for example, all of the scripts, we saw the list. If you go to GitHub, they're all there. And again, I'll try and remember to put it in the description below, but you can easily find with Google and just copy and pasting and then putting it in and then kind of molding it to what you need. And I think that's the best way to get started. And then over time, you can experiment and tighten things up or make things work in the way that you want them to work. And that's it for today's video. So if you want the code for the lab so that you can give it a try yourself then check out my github page i will have posted it on there by the time this video goes live and of course the links to the scripts will be in the description below if you enjoyed the video then don't forget to like and subscribe and if you have questions or you want to see more turbo intruder or web hacking and things like that then don't forget to drop by one of our weekly live streams and i will catch you next time